so the purpose of this video is to answer the question, can you use your nano DNA as a spectrum analyzer? And what would it do? How good would it be? How bad would it be? That sort of thing. So uh, I have it hooked up here. Uh, I have it kind of mounted so, so I can get everything into the same screenshot. Um, I am using my uh, 8921 as a function generator. So the only, the only thing this is doing is acting as a function generator. So currently I have it set on 100 megahertz and it is outputting minus 10 dBm and it is inputting to the channel one of the nano VNA. I'll describe how that might work later, but let's see if it actually acts as a spectrum analyzer or not. I'm gonna turn the room lights off so I think we get a better display. All right, and I think you can see there's a little spike there. So this is set to 100 megahertz, so 50, 50 megahertz span set to 100 megahertz. The mode that I have the uh, Nano in is I'm um, using a channel one log mag. Um, so let's zoom in a bit. Well, first of all, let's see, let's see if that, that spike moves. I will change the uh, frequency 99, 98, 97, 96. And you say, hey, look, it's moving. It's acting just like a spectrum analyzer. Uh, so let's zoom in a bit. Uh, span 10 megahertz. And I'll do the same thing. I'll move it over. That looks great. It's moving over. All right, so this is a pure sine wave, so we should be able to zoom in pretty far. Let's do a span of, oh, let's say 20 kilohertz. And uh, it doesn't look like a very nice signal now. Um, it should look better than that, so let's do span of 50, 50 kilohertz. And now we're getting two humps. Uh, so we're getting a hump at the frequency of interest, but we're also getting a hump over here. So it's not acting as a spectrum analyzer. It's sort of acting as a spectrum analyzer a little bit, but not entirely. So a spectrum analyzer would need to have a good bandpass filter in the uh, processing chain and, and it does not. It has a, a weird filter that does weird things. Um, and so if you if you zoom in it, it doesn't look all that great. Let's do a span of uh, 35 megahertz. Oh 35 megahertz. 35 kilohertz. 35 kilohertz. And we see that weird double hump thing again. Um, so let's span of one megahertz. Now it looks reasonable. Now it looks like a reasonable thing. Let me change the frequency again. And I'm changing it too far. Let me, let me change it by a little bit. So if you use it in a certain range, it acts sort of like a spectrum analyzer. So the answer is you can sort of use it as a spectrum analyzer, but it's a really, really bad spectrum analyzer. Um, and I can't predict when it's going to act correctly and when it's not going to act correctly. And even with a large span, it can do strange things. So let me see if I can... Let me see if I can remember how to do that. We're starting at 144, we're stopping at 148. And here I'm stepping across the two meter band. So that seems pretty good. Let's, uh, let's move it slowly. Uh, there we go, see? Yeah, this is, where, this is where I noticed it. So here we're in the center, we're at 146. Here we're at 145.9 and it, it just went way down. 
145.7. So there's a weird filter in the uh, spectrum analyzer. So like every other, yeah, the other frequency here is low. Um, some are high, some are low. Here's another low one. Um, so even across the uh, two meter band, it's doing, it's doing weird things. So does that mean it's still useless? Well, you know, if you were wanted to kind of check to see if you were actually transmitting on a particular frequency, at least it would show you you had something there. Maybe you can't use the amplitude, but it'll tell you that there was something there. Um, it might show you if you had an extra frequency someplace else. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I'm not able to generate two frequencies at the same time. Um, but um, it does do this weird thing where it goes up and down and up and down. And that has to do with the internal filtering of the, uh, of the nano. All right, so let's, uh, let's go talk about, um, but just for fun, let's zoom, let's zoom in on this one at this frequency. A uh, span of uh, 50 kilohertz. Oh, there you go. See, now it's even weirder. Instead of two humps, it's like multiple humps. So that may be a clue into why it goes up and down depending on what frequency you're at. It's got this really weird filter. Now, why does the VNA have a weird filter in it? Why does it just have a normal band pass? Well, it's, it's, it's in VNA mode and it has to use all of that harmonic structure to get multiple wavelengths and stuff. So um, it's, very, it's a very complicated system and it's not a spectrum analyzer. It's not optimized as a spectrum analyzer. So uh, yeah, you get, you get really weird results when you zoom in. Okay, let's turn on some modulation. Let's zoom in. Uh, let's do a span of 50 kilohertz. Oh, let's see. No, that's not going to work, is it? Uh, let's do a span of 100 kilohertz. Well, that's not looking right either. Span of 0.5 megahertz. There we go. So. If you look closely, it is a double hump, but maybe you can forgive it for that. <laughs> so let's just assume that that's working okay. We're going to add some modulation. We're going to add some. Uh, we're going to add some AM modulation at one kilohertz, and we'll do fifty percent. Fifty percent modulation. Now let's do it at uh, five kilohertz. Yeah, it's sort of broadening. Let's do it at 10 kilohertz. And so it's doing weird, it's doing weird things. Um, I don't see a 10 kilohertz carrier anywhere. So, so the best that I can say is that if you want to try to do this trick, it sort of works at a wide span it definitely doesn't work at a narrow span and even at a wide span you might get into trouble. So, okay, so how does this thing function as a spectrum analyzer in the first place? Well, the, remember there's a channel zero and there's a channel one. So this is uh, channel zero and channel channel one and uh, they come into the spectrum anal into the uh, nano VNA and they get mixed. Okay, so they both run into a mixer this is really, really simplified. Uh, they run into a mixer and that mixer is, is run by a, a, an LO inside and then it goes inside a, a sound card, which is a, a, a audio. Okay, so it goes into an audio an analyzer. So because it has a mixer, it can sort of act as a spectrum analyzer. So if the LO is sweeping, so if we're sweeping and uh, we have it set up so that we're sweeping from 144 to 148 megahertz, then we're going to end up somewhere in some audio frequencies here. Um, and so we will have 
a recording of the signal in, in audio space. And then we can apply an additional filter. Okay, so now there's software, uh, software filters in the um, machine. And then it gets displayed as uh, uh, frequency versus amplitude, right? So frequency versus amplitude, and you'll get a, you'll get, hopefully get a spectrum analyzer thing. But this um, relies on the spectrum analyzer having a very narrow bandpass filter. And the more expensive the spectrum analyzer, the narrower the filter. So my particular spectrum analyzer over there has a 300 hertz uh, filter. A lot of spectrum analyzers will have a one kilohertz filter. Um, so you'll be able to see a certain, certain resolution here. Unfortunately, the, the VNA has some type of weird, weird filter built into it. And so that filter creates artifacts out here and makes it look weird. So it doesn't have this nice narrow filter. It has this weird filter. And then it's complicated by, oh, by the way, the nano VNA has calibration data. And I don't know what the calibration data does to, I, I don't know anything about the software inside the nano VNA. So, um, but in general, it does have a mixer. It does able, it is able to sweep. And then it has some filter of weirdness that allows you to look at one small part of the spectrum as it sweeps back and forth. So part of the time it works, it works, you know, okay. And part of the time it works very bizarrely. So anyway, uh, use at your own risk.